Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, guys. Do you have some space for another presentation after this inspiring day? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. My name is Bart Jurkowski. I'm from Poland, and in my work, I combine psychology, design, and improvisation. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, I want to start with three good news. The first good news is for business. Uh, research shows that um, companies which are developed in human-centered design thinking have 32% more revenue than their competitors in their category. And usually, reaction of business is quite like this to this information. Uh, but it's another good news. Good news for employees because it occurred that if the company incorporated design thinking, over 71% of experts declared that it improved corporate culture of their teams, which actually makes the team happier and influences people. And the third good news is for us, for consultants and uh, applied improvisers, because over 50% of companies learn design thinking through other entities, experts, coaches, agencies, and us. And it means that we will have work. It's good news. <laughs> so, as you see, design thinking can benefit to these three areas at the same time. And that's why I think it's good to hear how can we help companies implement it. Um, and this is my aim here, to draw my point of view or how can we apply improvisation in the design thinking process and to point moments when we can do it and how we can do it. So let's start with the question what actually design thinking is. Design thinking is a problem solving methodology, let's say a creative problem solving methodology with few qualities that needs to be said. Um, usually what companies do when they have a problem, then they do either of two things. They do more of the same known things, increase marketing, hire more salesmen, or they do less of the known things. So they cut costs, etc. right? Very few of these companies do the third way they declare they, they don't know what to do and they search for new solutions. And this is the direction of design thinking that it can be applied to. Design thinking in, is one of the processes that uh, has the human in the center of focus. So it is one of the human-centered design processes, which means that human needs and problems are really in the center of attention of people working through design thinking. Um, the difference is that usually business have this product-oriented approach, and this is the difference. Another thing with design thinking is that it's not a recipe. It's rather a methodology with full of guidelines and it's a mindset, kind of a psychology, uh, psychology and philosophy of doing innovation to um, problem-solving solutions. And this is it. <laughs> it has five stages. I will shortly go through all of them uh, to describe it, but it needs two more elements. All of these stages are done by the team of people so we'll have to focus on the team first. And this process is um, based on create, to, to create an effect. So we'll discuss what can be the effect of design thinking process. Uh, and I would like to explain it to you using an example. Uh, my example would be from year 2011 from South Korea. Uh, at that time, there was a brand Home Plus, which was created by Tesco, and they were really big in South Korea at that time. They were second retailer at this country, and they had a specific problem, a business problem. Uh, they wanted to increase sales without increasing the number of stores, and that was a, a business challenge they wanted to solve. Um, what they did is they created the team 
to produce some new ideas, new solution to this problem. And this team was really a specific one because it was a um, cross-disciplinary team. And it is a quality that usually happens in design thinking processes. It's often done by, by people in different areas. But what they did, they hired an agency chain with these talented people here, um, and they started to do design thinking work. How can we as improvisers can help at this stage of design thinking work? I think you have your own ideas. These are my few. Uh, we can help them with communicating and listening skills. We can build the trust among this cross-disciplinary team and respect. We can create, help them create psychological safety. We can create tolerance for uncertainty. That's really something that they would need during doing design thinking work, and also to show them the difference between being judgmental and to be curious about different perspectives. This is what we can help them at that part of the process. And with building this map, I will be uh, listing these skills here, and we will create all the map here. So the first step in design thinking processes is always to empathize with people we are creating solution for. So this, at this moment, what companies often do, they conduct research to listen and understand their clients or users. And this is what they did in South Korea. They did tons of research interviews to ask Koreans why they show, when they show, uh, where do they show, what problems do they have with retails, and what needs do they have there. And after doing this, uh, they had some um, insights that I will talk about later, because now I can point out some qualities that we can help them with at this stage. First of all, active listening is a crucial quality that needs to be done during conducting research. Uh, asking open questions we can help them to develop this skill to be conscious about the difference between close and open questions. What I call conventional flexibility. When you talk to people during research, you need to be flexible to gather the more data that you can. Assumptions and exploring, this is something we can help um, them to do. And also the difference between proving right and the quality of the beginner's mind. These are the qualities that I can see there that we can help them with. And when you gather the data, you're ready to call it, to make some um, uh, information from this, from insights. And this is the part of the process. It's the part of defining. Uh, the defining step is about understanding your clients and to make observations and findings, uh, and also to reframe the problem. And what they did is uh, they gathered all the information and they had to find something that will stick there. And they did. The insight they found was that Koreans were really hardworking people. And I really mean that. That they are working long hours and they don't have time to shop. This is what the insight they found during this research. Uh, how can we help with this step? Uh, we can enhance their empathetic understanding of these people. We can reframe the patterns of thinking during this step and also help them search for insights within this chaos of information that they usually have. So this would be uh, qualities that we can help them with. But it's not everything actually at this step. We have another tool that we can use. Um, you can use improvisation actually as a method to gather data. And if you are interested in this topic, I don't have time to go really deep there, but there is a great article in Mindhatch describing how can we use improvisation to help um, gather information and collect data and make insights from it. So this is another product that we can implement into this thinking. Okay, so far so good. 
If we have understood our clients, now we're ready to create. And this is the third step of the process to ideate. Um, the ideation process is just about to create, to brainstorm bold creative ideas that answers the problem. And this is probably what they did. They did a few meetings to jam a few ideas and they found a really interesting one. Um, their idea was that they can change the waiting time into shopping time. Remember, it's 2011, so the mobile phones are not as popular as now. So uh, they moved from the idea into the concept part. So they wanted to make it more vivid, more bigger. And they came up with this concept of Home Plus service that has three steps. You scan the QR code of the product on your phone, it lands in your online chart, and then when you're coming back home, it's delivered to your place, to your home. Right? Really simple concept they created from the idea. Uh, how can we help companies at this stage? Uh, we can help them with creativity, with reaction to mistakes, um, to take an initiative and be bold with ideas, and also to show them the difference, which is crucial at this point, to have playfulness energy during this meeting rather than ego-based competition. And also we can show them the yes and techniques. Have you heard about this? Uh, okay, so these are the qualities really important at this stage of the process, but it's not everything. Uh, we can also um, facilitate brainstorms and uh, we can be hired by um, companies to help them generate ideas, to help with facilitation of these processes. And it, it happened to me twice, it worked really, really well. So now when we have a concept, there's another step to take, uh, and it's the prototype. So the prototype step is about building a representation of your concept, but you have to do it collaboratively. Collaboratively, <laughs> collaboratively. yeah. Um, and to, this is a simple move. Uh, we can discuss concept for many hours, but if we'll build one, it's the uh, moment where we can really test it to, to see how it feels, to see how it works. Uh, and this is what they did. They created mockups. Uh, probably they created another version of mockups to see how it can be to scan the QR code. And also, they uh, post a um, shop on the metro station in Seoul, like this, as, as a concept, as a prototype, right? How can we help companies at this stage? We can show them that perfection isn't a thing to do. Uh, we can help them with co-creation of these prototypes and also help them understand agility and implementation of change, right? So this will be the qualities that we can help with. And now, when you have the prototypes, it's the last step to test it. To actually go to your customers and test if the value of the solution is big enough that they would do something with it. And this is what they did. They let customers to um, engage with the concept and to see how it works. This is real pictures from Seoul. And they uh, have tested it. How can we help there? Um, there's a lot of adjusting the idea, so you have to be open for feedback from clients and customers. Uh, we can help them understand that failure is good and how can we use failure to generate more ideas and to develop our uh, concepts and prototypes and also how to iterate relentlessly at this stage. Okay, so these are the qualities we can help them with, but also this guy is uh, Tim Brown, a godfather of design thinking, and in his book, Change by Design, he is sharing something connected to improvisation. He says that actually prototypes don't need to be physical. It's completely fine that there are uh, storyboards, scenarios, movies, and improvised acting as uh, great prototypes. So if we have support of that guy, that's pretty good for us. And we have a tool to do it. 
you can use improvisation as a method for prototyping. And you can read about this in Liberating Structures uh, web page, which is open source and it's really great. I highly recommend you. Uh, there is a, a recipe how to do it there. So we have another tool that we can use within this process. So now about the effect. The effect is actually the moment when we move from design thinking into design doing and actually we are building the change and innovative products and uh, we start to go into the company make a change. Uh, the result for Home Plus uh, project was uh, that the online sales increased 130% and they become really close to the first uh, retailer store uh, at that the time, so it really benefits for them. And if you are interested in this concept, I will leave you with the, uh, the whole information about this. But how can we help them at this stage? This stage is really crucial. Uh, we can help them with agile leadership to actually influence the change that they want to do. Uh, we can help them with change management, with presentation skills, because these innovative products need to be told about to other people about communication within the teams and also the cooperation. Okay, so to sum up of this whole map, for me, there are quite a few moments where we can apply improvisation into this design thinking. The first one is actually to prepare the team, to set the team to help, to help them have this good vibe and psychological safety. The second workshop that I would usually do is to help them listen and understand uh, with the customer and to empathize with people just to be grounded in the problem they are trying to solve. Another thing is that we can use improvisation as a research method. The third step would be to help them create at the ideation uh, part and we can be hired to facilitate or to generate ideas with the business. The fourth one would be about building and rebuilding the prototypes and testing it. And we have another tool as we can use improvisation to generate prototypes and to test services and products. And last but not least, the effect. And we can help them manage the change they really want to, to do to influence. I will post this map uh, on our um, messenger, so don't worry about this. But there's also a problem with design thinking. The problem is this, that it's usually done by business people who spend their lives in this known environment, which um, the, the qualities that they are there is risk avoiding and having control. And actually design thinking all, always occur in the different environment, the environment of unpredictability and innovation. And it's really hard to be taken out of this blue zone into the unknown. Uh, and you can see it by how business is saying about design thinking. It's really simple, five steps. To everyone can do it, right? Or they, they try to show that it's really fluent and you can come back from the stages, but it's rather simple. Uh, or this one, uh, you have the six steps to emphasize, to define, to ideate, to prototype and test, but it looks really, really simple. For me, the best visualization of design thinking is this one. <laughs> it's chaotic, it's a mess. You don't know what's going on at the beginning and it's fine because at some point you have to grab something and it would be much, much more easier. And who can help business with this unpredictability and innovation? I think we know the answer, and I think now it's more easier to understand how we can do it. Thank you very much.